Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you to the new series of podcast that I, Guns and Toothpaste, is going to run starting today, October the 28th. Um, I've been wanting to do this since a long time, but the courage to do so has limited me. Uh, so here now, I present to you an experimental episode to gain some perspectives about what responses I get regarding this podcast series. I would be covering a range of topics. Uh, not particularly sticking to any category or genre. It would maybe about music, series, music, uh, sports, literature, current affairs, books, literally like anything. Um, and also I would like to wish you a very happy Tihar. It is one of the biggest um, festivals here in Nepal where I am currently living and is my country. Um, uh, so let's go on to the first episode of um, uh, this uh, series of podcasts that um, I would like to call Prologue. Uh, the topic of discussion uh, would uh, actually be about Coldplay and their experimental music, their past and what they are up to now. Um, so let's get on with it. A series of Coldplay posters and billboards have recently popped up around the world, leaving fans buzzing about the pos- prospect of a new music from the British pop stars. Uh, the band confirmed the rumors of a double album on album tw- October 22, uh, sharing an image of a postcard bearing the news that fans started receiving in the mail the day before. This new release will be the band's first since 2015's A Head Full of Dreams. Uh, They also released an EP under the group name Lost Unidates last November and a Dreams live album the following month. Um, The new album is called Everyday Life and it is out November 22. The first two tracks are already out, Arabesque and Orphans. Uh, Orphans has... uh, its video released a couple of days back. The song really resonated the type of music Coldplay has always represented. Uh, of course now they contain the EDM elements to them and there may be some kind of um, le- electronic uh, elements that are associated with their music now but still the song is too good for the ears and gives hints of uh, Coldplay in it. The music has always been derivative for Coldplay and it is always derived from various kinds of sources that we may associate them after their release Uh, like uh, ideas from books, literatures are taken in and mended in a particular way that sounds well to the ear. Um, Band members may have read a book or two for this album too. Uh, The Coldplay posters that appeared this week feature a black and white photo of band seated next to a man who appears to be German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche holding a saxophone. Uh, the posters are dated uh, November 22, 1919. Nietzsche died in the year 1900. The new album comes out on November 22, and the same as the dates in the posters. Uh, this is the side to Coldplay we have always known for the past 19 years. Since they first released Parachutes, that was the real deal at the time. The famous, the scientist, the song, the scientist has some ring to it. An answer in Cora by Isaac Parker Elliott, just a random um, guy and an amateur musician, uh, wrote, uh, essentially it's about a scientist who gets caught up in his work and starts to neglect his lover. He then realizes this and wants to go back to the start. It's really cool because it takes a scientist and makes him explore the one aspect of life that science cannot explain, that being love. I was just guessing at numbers and figures, pulling your puzzles apart. Questions of science, science and progress do not speak as loud as my heart. The scientist goes through several thought processes all while realizing all that the science in the world won't fulfill him like his lover did. Uh, actually, based on what I've heard about the song, the song is thought to be about a story by Nathalie Houghton in which a scientist leaves his love life behind for the pursuit of uh, science. Coldplay has done a mad amount of justice regarding the subject and the music is so mellow and comprehensive that everyone gets the song regardless um, of whether he has 
read or not read uh, Natalie and Harton. Songs like In My Place, um, Trouble and Green Eyes are so particular in their style. The songs from the past of um, Coldplay that whenever we listen to them, just the music, we are able to distinguish that um, they are Coldplay songs if one has heard Coldplay before. The lesson goes on and I could blab about this for a long, 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 long time, guys. But let's just end the episode here for a start since I don't want to lengthen this experimental episode. Um, so, guys, if you think anything regarding this episode of Wax Volva Podcast 1, Coldplay and the Experimental Music, uh, do drop the comments below and do not forget to hit like and subscribe button um, uh, down below. Hate my accent, like my accent. Hate my confidence. Just tell me about it. Till we meet again very soon in the next episode of Wax Walba. Goodbye guys. Have a good one. And happy Tia everyone.